spirit. Have your way, precious God, today. We promise you, Lord, as we fellowship in your sight this morning, pleading the blood of Jesus to purge our conscience, our heart, our body from all dead works. We obtain mercy and we find grace. I will return the glory back to you at the end of this meeting. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Beloved, once again, I, I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Uh, I believe that God has begun a great thing in the midst of his people. Yesterday was a great time. We had a great time of fellowship in the presence of the Lord. Speaking quickly from the book of Hosea, in Hosea chapter 6, verse 2, the Bible says, on the first day, God will revive us, and also on the second day, he will revive us. So today, I believe that God is set to revive us today. And as, he's, as we are revived in his presence, our life, our situation will never remain the same. Yesterday night, we learned from God's servant, the convener, the value and the importance and the benefit while we pray early in the morning. And I believe that every one of us already, the heavens are open over us already. The glory of God are descending. And I believe today, God is going to be doing great things in the midst of his people. It's my privilege this morning, as being given the opportunity to anchor the program this morning. My name is Pastor Uluwatumi Adeoyi Oyebanji from Nigeria. I will be your moderator and facilitator for this morning. And I believe we are going to be having a great time in the presence of the Lord. I know as somebody on this platform this morning, or somebody that will be joining us very soon, that God will literally visit his or our abode in the name of Jesus Christ. So this morning, we're quickly going to go to our program of, of day. The, the, the team will, will project the program. I think it's not clear. Please help us to project the program so that everybody can see the program for this morning. Uh, this is our day two. Uh, we are now in the time of corporate prayers. Uh, we've had worship time. Uh, we're going to go straight into the program. We have great men of God, ministers of God that have been prepared today to lead us in each of the sessions. And I believe that as the leaders, the God of heaven, we will minister to us today in Jesus' mighty name. So we're going to have a time of exhortation, to exhortation and prayer time, and then we'll break the bread this morning. So, brethren, uh, this morning is my privilege to introduce one of our exhorter, our distinguished father, a man of great grace, great depth, great anointing. He has been he has been a father to the GBR family. Every time we gather together and we see him come up to minister, it's a depth of grace that God has given to him. God has preserved him. God has watched over him over the years. He has been consistent. He has been the teacher of the word of God. He has been a family man. He has been an apostle in his own uh, realm. And today, we are privileged to have His Excellency, Dr. Jonas Kaui from the Republic of South Africa. He will be taking us on the first exhortation, emunate the royal high priest. And this morning, Your Excellency, sir, it's my privilege to, to give you the platform. You have the next 20 minutes. Uh, we want to keep up to our time. So by the time you see me coming up again, please note that you have less than three minutes to wrap up so that we can moderate our time effectively. We know the spirit of God is with you and you will minister to us today powerfully in Jesus' name. Thank you, Excellency. Your time starts now. God bless you. I hand over to you, sir. Your Excellency, thank you so much. Uh, I'm trying to open my uh, video. My, my video, is it open? No, yes, it should be open now. You can try it now. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to open it. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, They'll give you the right now to open it very soon. Yeah, but let me continue. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you so much for okay. Start my video. Okay, let's say say start my video. Oh, there you are. Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you, Excellency. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. And uh, thank you for 
uh, your, your wonderful opening prayer this morning. Uh, I want to greet all the excellencies, the leaders. Uh, I want to greet our convener, uh, adjunct Professor Sipo Mseleku. I want to congratulate you for your professorship. This is really great. This is a breakthrough. This is a blessing uh, to all of us. Uh, I want to also to greet uh, the intercessors, um, Pastor Carol, uh, Apostle Nyalungu, and uh, Apostle Obanji, and uh, all the leaders of GBR and JFFG. I want to greet you all this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I count it as an honor and privilege this morning to be afforded this opportunity to share with you uh, the way of exhortation. It is a real a, a, a pleasure and privilege to me. This morning, I would like to exhort you, I would like to talk to you about the importance of emulating the high priest. Indeed, my brothers and sisters, God is giving us a sketch of the profile of Jesus, who is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. As I continue this message, I must say that last year I was privileged to undergo an intensive training under Global School of Ministry, which is led by Apostle George. It was a privilege, it was an honor and I must say, and I want to give the credit to most of the things that I will mention it now, that I have learned them from Jisong, the global school of ministry. I have gained quite a lot. It took very intensive nine months training. And some of the things that I'll be sharing with you are from that input that I have received. The reason that we need to emulate our high priest in the order of Melchizedek, the reason is simple, I believe, because we are called to emulate him alone who is the author and finisher of our faith. Now, as we read in the Bible, Hebrews chapter 12, one to two, the Bible reads, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now the question we should ask and answer ourselves is, can we emulate mortal men or woman? This morning, I would like to propose that indeed we should start strike a balance on the issue of emulating our high priest, Jesus Christ, and mortal men or woman. My wife, continuously speaks about the importance of balance. And sometimes we overemphasize one area in the expense of another. This morning, I just want to strike a balance. That indeed, we, we can emulate even the mortal man. But now on the conditions of emulating mortal men and women, we should not be on the, it should not be on the basis of either their anointing, their stature, their popularity, their size of work done or any external manifestation of ministry. The only basis of such emulations of humans is that they are evidently sold out to Jesus and his kingdom purposes manifested in the self-evident transformations that follow the death of their self-natures. People must die in their self-natures. People must die in their selfishness in order for us to emulate them. In other words, my brothers and sisters, Christians can only emulate those who are used by God to model and proclaim the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. This was the point which Paul established as basis of his apostleship as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Verse one, Paul says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Let me briefly give you three point pointers of how to emulate our high priest, Jesus Christ. Firstly, Jesus did not thrust himself forward before his time. I want to repeat that one. Jesus did not thrust himself forward before his time. He did not exhibit any ambition to be known. He allowed the process of time and training by his father to be completed and eventually be endowed by the power of the Holy Spirit to take place before he went into the public ministry. In the meantime, he was a helper of Joseph and Mary. He spent 30 years in obscurity. During this time, he fully identified 
with the limitations of humanity and was well prepared, so to say, for the short, short public ministry of three and a half years. He was in obscurity. He allowed himself to be in the process of training. As we read in Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, rather Matthew chapter 3 from verse, from verse 13 to 17, the, the Bible says, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. God put a stem. God released him after he allowed himself to undergo the process, the process of training. He undergone what I call the process of tertiary. And this is uh, what Apostle George emphasized the process of tertiary, which means when, when I say tertiary, it means for teach, train, teach, train, teach, taught, equipped, activated, and released to the ministry. Now, what, what lesson are we learning from this scenario of Jesus Christ. We must not despise the years appointed for us to be taught, to be trained, to be equipped, to be activated in the ministry of the Holy Spirit before we are being released into public ministry. You know, as humans, sometimes we rush. We rush the process. As human, we incline to go for quick fix, quick fix. And hence, many of us fail in the process because we are not emulating our high priest, we are not emulating Jesus Christ who allowed himself the process. Brothers and sisters, we must allow ourselves a process to undergo a process. Convener yesterday, he mentioned that God deployed him in various stages in life, God prepared him and it was not easy. You know, uh, for the last past uh, 10 years, uh, I was with him. I'm a witness of what, hap of what happened to some of the trials, to some of the difficult times that 
GBR under God. But it was a process. It was a process. In this scenario, we need to learn that the years of preparation are years of character formation and building up depths of integrity, which will stand us in good stead in public ministry. The years we live in obscurity, serving faithfully with other people to whom we are connected by God are years of active preparation to be authentic leaders. So my brother, my sister, don't rush the process. God is equipping you. God is dealing with you. God wants to produce a man, an authentic leader, a man who will stand against trials, difficulties, and challenges. Because ministry is not pop and place. It is important to, to fulfill our years of obedience before God separates us to public ministry or where he has assigned us to make a difference. There's a warning I want to give you. There's a warning I want to give you. Warning to those who cannot help to build up ministries committed to the trust of other people are negating their ability to be given opportunity to be an authentic leaders. As we read in Luke 6, 12, and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is yours? You need to be loyal. You need to be faithful. You need to be faithful in what is another man's. Who will give you what, and God will give you what is your own. I just want to touch two headings because my time is up. My time is up. Secondly, I would like to say, Jesus was totally sold out to the will of his father and made his secure dwelling place. The truth was at the center of the awesome life of Jesus lived on earth. He emphasized it continually that his greatest desire was not to do anything spectacular, but to simply be in the will of God at all times. Take this samplers. John 4, 34. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. John 5, 30. I can, I can of myself do nothing as I hear. I judge and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father which sent me. John 6, 38. For I come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. What is the lesson? What is the lesson here? The lesson is that the will of God is our dwelling place. When we, emphasize, when we embrace the will of God, his righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit will permeate the core of our beings as the royal priest 
demonstrate the reality of the kingdom. It is essential that we come into experiential understanding that the will of God is our dwelling place. My brothers and sisters, my time is up, but let me just mention the third point. I'll just mention it. The third point was that Jesus was real, Jesus was vulnerable and transparent. He was like human. He, did, he lived in transparent life, which showed vulnerability. The gospel is bold. Relief as Jesus. He was hungry sometimes. He was hungry. And I, I won't get into that. But we who are of this, the same order of Melchizedek, need to be real and transparent also with those appointed to walk with us. There is no need to build, uh, to, to hide under a blanket. We need to be vulnerable so that brothers and sisters can see any weaknesses and offer support for prayers and help. My brothers, we need, we need to be transparent to each other as we build God's kingdom. May God richly bless you. Thank you so much for such an opportunity. Amen. 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 Wow, 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 wow. Your Excellency of a truth, this is from a very rich and deep source. Uh, we can never take this teaching for granted. I, I, I will recommend this teaching as a teaching that should be replayed again and again and again. Your Excellency, thank you very much, Your Excellency, uh, for your fatherly, your God counsel this morning. Sincerely speaking, I must confess and testify that there is an impact of the Bible school on you. The you I saw before, and the you I'm hearing from this morning, there is a difference. Thank you for allowing God, even at your age. I think one of the very important lessons I'm picking from your lifestyle this morning is that irrespective of where you have arrived, there is still room to learn. There is still room to grow. There is still room to be like Jesus every day, irrespective of your track record. If somebody like you, at your age, with all your experiences, you are still submitting to the feet of Jesus to learn and to be useful to God even at old age, just to fulfill scripture in Psalm 92, as even at old age, you'll be green and flourishing. Then the younger generation, we have a lot of challenge this morning to know that we must go back to the plowing place and learn more. Your Excellency, you've touched on very, very important issue that is affecting the body of Christ, particularly the ministers. We are, we are in an age and time where ministers are in a hurry to come out of the oven. People go to Bible school for one month, they go to Bible school for two months, and they want to go to preach the ministry. And the excuse they give is that there is no more time. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Yes, Jesus is coming soon, but the place of process, the place of preparation, the place of not running ahead, like you said, of the one that has the assignment, it's very, very key. It's a message that I need it, we all need it. Some of us have gone through this experience for over the years, the Lord is still keeping us. Something is telling us go out, but God said no, we still have to learn. So it's a very important message I have received from, we have received from you this morning, talking about the years of preparation, the years of character formation to, to authenticate your leadership, or the years of the fulfillment of your obedience, being loyal, being faithful, willing to serve other, other people, being like Jesus. Know that you are vulnerable, you are transparent, uh, and, and, and you are accountable to God and to the people that you live with all across the world. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, this morning. We are blessed. We'll keep drinking from your fatherly grace. And I pray that the fountain 
will never cease. Out of you shall flow rivers, rivers that will flow across the nation to bless mankind. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We are grateful. Quickly, to lead us forward, uh, we are supposed to be going to Bene Republic. Uh, I don't know whether His Excellency Dr. Kumabe is around, but if Dr. Kumabe is not around on this platform now, on Bene Republic, I will quickly ask my brother, Apostle Joseph Yalungu, to take over the stage in the next 15 minutes to lead us in prayer direction. Your Excellency Apostle, are you on? Is your time now? I'm on, my brother. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for that word, uh, Dr. Kawe. Thank you so, so, so very much. That is a um, deep apostolic teaching there. And we, we're going to pray in line with that word, a, a couple of uh, prayer points. And, and I'm going to bring the scriptures. Actually, the words that you touched on, uh, if you look at the process in Luke chapter 2, it tabulates the entire process. Number one, we see that Jesus was born a baby. That word baby there is nepios. Uh, in Luke 2.12, he says he was wrapped in swangling clothing. Those are clothes of a newborn baby in a manger. Those are, that's the word nepios. First Peter 2 says, as newborn babies, we are to desire the milk of the word that we may grow thereby. If you read further, you read in same Luke chapter two, we hear the following in verse 40, it says, and the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and grace. As you know, in any process of any vision, there has to be growth there should be maturity. And the maturity is brought about by the word of God. The Bible says here that, you know, a baby drinks milk, the milk of the word, so we may grow. So there's a process of growth. There's no escaping that process. And you touched on very fundamental words on serving and faithfulness. Many people think they're big to serve. And in the kingdom of God is about serving. It's about saving one another. It's about saving God. It's about saving the vision of God. We'll always remain servant. Deuteronomy, Exodus 23, 25, it says, if you serve the Lord, help bless your bread and water. So I want us to pray that wherever we are in the global business roundtable, in society and wherever we are, that we will have the spirit to serve, to serve God's people, to serve one another, that is also an indication of loving one another and not just being faithful to God, but being faithful to each other. Many people think it's just faithfulness to God. You don't care about others. That's not true. God looks for the attitude of faithfulness because God is faithful and that's the character. God is developing in us to be faithful. Faithful when it's not even nice. You know, it's not always gonna be nice even in Gibraltar, but you stay faithful, you stay to your post because God has put you there. So I want us to pray this morning in line with this word that Father, give us the heart and the attitude to serve. Just we've seen in the Lord, Yeshua Mashiach, who served, who's faithfully served the Father, who served his generation by the will of God. Father, I pray, let us all pray. Father, I pray that Lord, by your grace, You'll give us the grace to serve, to save, Lord, our generation by your will, to save you even in this mandate that is yours. I pray, Father, for the spirit of grace, the spirit to save, to save, Lord, our generation in accordance with this mandate, Father, even as your son, Sipom Seluku spoke yesterday that this is a generational mandate. Lord, your way declares that David served his generation by your will. Lord, the prophetic has revealed your will, your plan, and your purposes for our generation. And it is that, Lord, in every sphere of society that your kingdom will be established, Father. Father, we pray 
Even as Paul declared that this woman, they serve with me in the kingdom of Yeshua, that we will serve with each other and serve you, our Father, serve you, our God, serve you in all fears of society to ensure the establishment of your plan, of your purpose, and of your will. Father, I pray within the Global Business Roundtable, I pray for the grace and the spirit to serve. I pray for the attitude to serve. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. I pray for that spirit, the servant spirit, the spirit of humility, Lord God, the spirit that is from you to serve one another, even as you said in the book of Galatians, in love, Lord, in love, considering others better than ourselves. I pray, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua. And I thank you for the spirit, the spirit of God. Lord, even as you demonstrated the nature and the character of God. You even said, I did not come to be saved, but to serve. May the spirit of saving prevail and reign. Father, in the Global Business Roundtable and in every nation, I pray that you will raise seven leaders, leaders who want to serve their people, not serve themselves. Not who those who are selfish and self-centered who have made it about themselves. I pray that the spirit and the grace of Yeshua be emulated of a servant leader who came to serve. I pray this in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, we're going to pray prayer number point number two on the spirit of faithfulness. You know, as I was praying now, the Lord just reminded me that you cannot serve others. He says, you are to regard others better than yourself. You can't serve others if you think highly of yourself. You know, and that does not mean thinking low of yourself either. Joshua knew who he was in John chapter 13. The Bible says he put aside his garment and he put, you know, a garment of a servant. He came to serve. And in this mandate, we priv- were given the privilege to serve and, you know, those who come into this mandate and are not willing to serve others, they can make it because this is about saving, saving God's purpose. The second thing is in Hebrews chapter three, and he says he was faithful, telling us about Moses, the servant of God, that he was faithful in all the house of God. And Yeshua was also faithful. So I pray that God will give us the spirit of faithfulness, faithful to this mandate. You know, I believe is that it is by the spirit of God that we stood faithful all these years. And and I'm not talking faithful in the eyes of the leader. The Bible says in the book of Philippians, saving from the heart, not with eye service, not saving when you are seen. And you are not saving to be seen. You are saving because you are saving and doing the will of God from your heart. You are doing the will of God from your heart, not for I say it's not for pleasure, even if the convener never would acknowledge you, but in God sees what you're doing and you're doing it faithful to the glory of God. So I pray that we pray this prayer point for the spirit of faithfulness. Let us be faithful, oh Lord, to this commission. Let us be faithful because this is God's vision. Father, I pray, let's pray, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashi, in the name of Jesus, our King, the one who was faithful before you. And it is because he was faithful that you entrusted him with such a level of authority and power. It is because he was faithful that you have highly exalted him, the one who humbled himself and served and was faithful to you, faithful to do your will. Faithful even before, when he stood before Pontius Pilate, he was faithful, he confessed. He never denied you. May we remain faithful in every place where you have called us. Father, even as Dr. Jonas has said, our, our elder and our stewards about faithfulness, I pray because, Lord, faithful is your nature. Thank you for developing the character and the attitude in us of faithfulness, Lord. 
And Lord, I also pray that we be faithful, doing the will, your will from our hearts, not for men's pleasure, but yours. Faithful to each other, loving each other, because you said so. Even in situations where it looks like it's unlovable, but we do it because of your word. We honor our leaders. We honor, Father, each other and honor you more than anything because of your word. I pray for the spirit of faithfulness to prevail, not just, Lord, in GBR, but in the nations of the earth, in all spheres of society, Lord, that things will be done in the fear of God, in the light of who you are, doing the will of God in our hearts, doing it towards you, being faithful because you have called us, faithful as stewards of mysteries, faithful, Lord, of stewards of our children, of resources, Lord, of our communities to bring forth your word, faithful Lord, in this vision, to administer it to your grace and to your glory. Oh, Shakuriman de Colonisa de Babaladuya. Let faithfulness prevail like it has never done before, even in this next phase. Father, this is the body upon which you have built this, all your organization, you've built it on the character of man, because you said that, Lord, your act, your presence will be carried on the shoulders of the priest. It is in their character, Lord, even as Paul prayed, and these are pillars. You have established pillars. Pillars can be dependable, can, can be trusted. Pillars cannot be moved. We pray for men and women that can be dependent upon and cannot be moved upon whom you will put the weight of your glory and your presence. And upon whom, Lord, also the convener will be able to have peace in heart that he has know that he's got pillars that will stand. They will stand the time, those who have been tested to be approved. I pray that, Lord, we will go through any process that you have deemed important for us to go through as your people, for us to be able to carry the next level of glory, the next level of your manifestation, the next level of your power. I pray this, Father, in the mighty and the precious name of Yeshua, sweet spirit of God, you who appoints and no appointed times, I pray that we will each know the appointed time in Yeshua's name. Amen. Let me pray the last prayer, beloved. You know, I've asked the Lord many times. I've been in places where they said to me, Apostle study church, and I didn't study it until five, 10 years after when God spoke. I asked God, I said, Lord, when do I know my appointed time? And, and, and you know, Dr. Kawa shared on it. But in Luke chapter 3, God gave me this word years ago. He said, verse 2, he says, While Annas and Cephas were high priests, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zachariah, in the wilderness. In other words, the word of God came to him to say, son, it's time now. But if you read in Luke 1 verse 8, he says, so the child grew, John, this is John. He grew. He grew and became strong in spirit. Because the assignment needs spiritually strong men and women. He grew and became strong in spirit and was in the desert till, mark that, that word is a timely word, till the day of his manifestation to Israel. So when did that day come? When the word came again. Sometimes the word will come first to tell you who you are, to tell you what God has called you to do. But you must still wait for that same word. The Bible says in Psalm, the way it tested Joseph. Joseph had to wait for an appointed time for his vision, the time for which God had already told him. And sometimes the things that are happening, God has already told us. But we wait still. We wait for the appointed time. We don't rush it. We wait on God. So let us pray this last prayer point, and I'll be finished with this one that Lord, God will help us all to know the appointed time. Ecclesiastes says to every purpose, there's a, an appointed time. 
that by the word of God will be led to go forth at the appointed time to do what we're supposed to do. Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua King, in the glorious name, that name that's above every name, that name that I love and adore, that name that is oil point forth, that name that is sweet, that name that is glorious, the name of the one you exalted because he humbled himself. Lord, we read in the book of Galatians that he was born at the appointed time. Everything happened at the right time. He said to his brothers, it's not my time yet. He said to his mother, Miriam, woman, why are you bothering me? It's not time yet. He was never ambitious. He was never in a rush, even as we had this morning. But he lived on your calendar. He aligned his life to the times of heaven, to the times appointed by you, Father. And we ask that this morning you will help us to, Lord, go in accuracy of time, times appointed by you, that we will not be put to pressure by men or by any circumstance to perform. But Father, we will defy even circumstances of poverty that wants us to move because we want things. No, we refuse and we move only as you say we must move. We will not move at the presence of men to perform. We will not leave the assigned place, our appointed places because of any pressure or anyone who wants to move us, but we will stay because you have appointed and you know the set time, the set seasons, the season, even as you said, Yeshua, the seasons appointed by the Father, that Father, we will walk in accordance to your appointed times and seasons, even in this mandate. I pray for everyone. I pray for everyone in this commission to move according to appointed times. Thank you that Father, your kingdom does not operate on ambitions, but it operates on your will and your word. The way that is said times and seasons. Lord, we read in Luke that during the times of Anus and Cephas, the word came to John in the wilderness. Before he was made manifested, he came in obedience to your word. And that's why there was great father victories. And that's why there was such a great ministry. We pray that the word for our time will appoint us and bring us forth to do that which you have determined to be done. That Father, even in this season, and I've heard so many times, I've heard it from day one, from year one, from year two, year three, whenever the convener came and people came and I was there and they said, you, why don't you do this or that? And he said, it's not time yet. And I've seen many leave disappointed, even ministers of the gospel, because he stood to know that it was not time. You said 10 years and 10 years means 10 years. We refused, and he refused specifically, to be present by men, even by needs. I can think, Father, that there were needs many times when you were 24, Yeshua. There were people sick, there were people broke. I, I can think that when you were even 29, there were situations in the earth that you waited on the time of the Father. Help us, Lord, all of us, to emulate this great attitude of waiting upon you. Because you said those that wait upon you shall mount up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint because you will supernaturally carry them. May we be supernaturally carried by your spirit just like Ezekiel was, just like Jeremiah was. May we be supernaturally carried in this mandate into those times and seasons appointed by you. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you. Amen. Beloved, Apostle. thank you, Excellency. I return it back to you. Thank you so Fa much. Thank you, my brother. You have done beautifully well. Lord, we thank you for this prayer time. Thank you because our prayers are answered already. Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Excellency, thank you very much for that great input, uh, the Lord will reward you in Jesus' name. Your Excellency, I believe we're already being refreshed. We're already being revived. Quickly, we're going further in our program. We will not delay because we are going all the way now to Brazil. 
to my very good friend, uh, the man of God, Bishop uh, Oliver Batau. Your Excellency, it's my privilege after a long while to connect with you this morning. Thank God for the victory that Jesus has given to you, both in your personal life, in your ministry, and your family. I want to thank God for what God is using to do in the nation of Brazil. And I know today, as you come up to bless us, we all will be encouraged once again. Thank you for allowing God to use you this morning to bring a word on the kingship of Jesus Christ. Your Excellency, you have the floor now. You're welcome. Amen, amen. So glad to talk for, here from Brazil. Greetings for all of you. You are here in the time zone time for us now. It's like one o'clock in the morning, but we are so glad to be joined this GBR family and to be part of this prayer time. I'm sure that God has a lot of things to add to us, a lot of things to move to our lives. And I'm glad because all over the world, this pandemic is not a time to make shame to the altar. The altar of God is always being honored on this time of pandemic. And here in Brazil, we just received from God a very nice vision in the city where I'm located to establish a church center. It means that a place to everyone in Christ can enjoy. Everyone can be part of this place and everyone can be here at this place to have this fellowship, to have this time of worship. So we have a facility in the city, the best building of the city. We open this facility on the pandemic time. Here we have the offices of GBR, and here we have a facility to all of saints of God who want to be here and want to be part of the body of Christ. They have a time to worship. It is like a, a tiny shared church. So you can slot your time here and have the facility with all the conditions to worship God, to have the meetings, to have the lives, and everything is happening. So I'm so glad to see God is doing amazing things. So I'm here to bless these people and to know that everything, I'm just going to show a little bit of this, of this place, what God has given to us. This nice facility is something very, very interesting. And I'm, I hope that like a model we can have in our cities, we can have in our countries, we can have facilities like this open opportunity spaces to everyone to come to worship God and to have their time together and to prove that this pandemic time is not to make a shame of the altar, but to honor the sense of God, to honor God's family and to see things happening in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I, ho I hope we, we all have the possibility to, to share and to see what's going on here what God is doing, what we, we can really perform from this time on. Our, our topic today is just about the kingship of Jesus. So it's something very important for us to understand how Jesus as a king wants to be recognized by every one of us. Unfortunately, we see that people just listen to Jesus and know about Jesus in a very religious way. You want to know about Jesus in a very dynamic way. So the first thing I will have to ask is about who is Jesus for you? Who is Jesus for you? What he has really to tell us and how do you see Jesus in your life? And how do you see Jesus doing things for you? Unfortunately, people say that Jesus is the one who is a philosopher. Jesus is the one who just came on earth to, to be a man, and people like his ideas, like his stories, but we, we don't, don't see Jesus as the Son of God, and we don't have a personal experience with Jesus. So most important for us now is to consider the rule of the kingship of Jesus and to know who is Jesus for us. So we unfortunately see that some worship him as a baby, so we see today people saw all the baby Jesus and we, in the idolatry, they build a sanctuary to the infant Jesus, to the divine child Jesus. And we go even to the Holy Land, we see Nazareth, we see around there in Bethlehem, people doing Chinese and things to say, oh, Jesus, he is a baby. Oh, Jesus, he is a man. Oh, Jesus, he is a philosopher. And we sing songs about Jesus of Nazareth. 
we're teaching ideas and theories, and people had this approach to the Bible, as approached to the letter. And the Bible says that the letter doesn't bring us life. We need to receive the life. We need to receive what God has prepared for us. And I'm sure that today we have to see Jesus in a completely different way as you have this time on before him, a time to worship, a time to pray, a time to release our life, a time to see things happening in a so amazing way. And this is the way you want to see. He is the one. Like we you want to, in a deep performance way, we want to know, we want to have a fellowship. So when Jesus was in the land, he asked people, who do people say about me? Um, and Peter was there and said, oh, some will say that you are a prophet like Elijah, other like John the Baptist, or like Jeremiah. And uh, why Jesus make that question about himself? It was not a public opinion. It was something very important. He wanted to know about the revelation. So he said, who do you say I am? So this is a very personal question I have to take now to say, who do we say Jesus is? What he is for you? What he, his I am. When I like the I am, because in Hebrew, we don't have the I am. The I am is the name of God. So when you say I am, you are going to say God. Who you say I am? And Peter, in Matthew 16, verse 17, says, You are Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. So, in a nutshell, we can say that Jesus must be revealed. Jesus must be revealed not by a religion, not by a philosophy, not by theology, not by academy, not even by our fathers, by the Father. Jesus wants to be revealed for you in a personal way. The Father wants to reveal Jesus. So our condition to approach the Father, so we're here to pray. We have to pray now. We pray, Abba, Father, because the Father is the one who is about to reveal the Son. We need to pray, Abba, Father. So this word, Abba, is the easiest word for us to pronounce. You see, in the Hebrew alphabet, we have 22 letters, but only the first two, the Aleph and the Beit. With these two letters, we can say, Abba. So Abba is a labial, is a lip sound, because it's a sound of very familiar. We don't call, or don't call father in a different sound, like the fricative sound, as a palatal sound. Very easy sound to say Abba. We pronounce it Abba, because it's a lovely sound. So God wants to reveal. Father wants to reveal us the Son. When the Father reveals the Son, in Hebrew, very interesting also, because with Abba, Aleph, and Beit, we say the word Abba. If you invert the letters, if you say Beit and Aleph, you have the word Ba. And Ba means to come in the Hebrew. So with two letters, we have two words, Abba, Ba. Ba and Hav also have a prayer. Ba, Abba, come, Father. Father is the one who wants to come. At this time, at this morning for you, at this, this morning for me also here, we have to say, Abba. We have to say, God, come to us. You have to say, come to us to reveal the Son. Because we see today in the society, a lot of problems between the relationship in Father and Son. But the Father has a plan for the Son. The plan that the Father has for the Son is to promote the Son. Unfortunately, in some families, we see so many rivalries, so many, a lot of fights and things and discussions. But we know that God is our Father, and He wants to reveal the Son because He wants to promote the Son. So you see the verse in Philippians chapter two, verse nine. He says, "What is the idea? What to promote the Son?" And He says that He's given to the Son. God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name. You see, no one knows in Hebrew, in the Jewish religion, how to pronounce the name of God. So when they found the four letters, 
Yud Hei Vav Hei, the tetragram, when they found the letters of the name of God, they don't pronounce the name of God. They just say Adonai. But now we have a name, and the name is Jesus. We have a name to call because the Father promote the name of Jesus. So we are going to pray in the name of Jesus. We know Jesus with all his majesty, with all his power. He is the one who was promoted. He is the one who was exalted. He is the one who everyone have to me and shall every knee shall bow down in heaven and earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the glory of God the Father, he wants to give glory to the Son, and the Son is giving glory back to him. The problem of the, the Lucifer is that Lucifer received the glory, and didn't want to give back the glory. He was just retaining the glory. And for this retention of the glory, he falls. The falling of Lucifer is not a kick out. It's himself received so many glory and didn't give it back. That was, was heavy and he just fell down. But the son received the glory and gives back the glory. So every time we do that, we receive and we give back. We are promoting the union. We are promoting what God gives to us. And I hope we can understand today that all, all the glory that the Son receives and give it back to Father, this is the glory that we also are part. We are part of the glory. We also understand that he promotes, he has the glory, and he gives all authority to him. He says in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18, that all authority was given to him. When we understand this authority, we see that every situation that we have around in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. So that's the only one we have. It's the only one we know. He is the one who received the authority. And this authority, he gave it to us. So we have the glory. We have the name. We have the authority. So we start to understand Jesus in a such a way, in a way very, very profound, in a way that you know that he is the one who must to be adored. He is the one who has kingship over every situation. And I want you to know that you to know about the first word of the Bible. The first word of the Bible, Genesis 1 1, is in the beginning. So this word in Hebrew is very interesting. Because Bereshit has the word Rosh. Rosh means head. So the first word of the Bible says in the heads. The beginning is the heads. The beginning is not other, it's not the heart. The beginning is the heads. Who is the head? Jesus is the head. So in the first word of the Bible, we have a reference about Jesus. Who is Jesus for you? Jesus is the head. Jesus is the one who placed everything, all things under his feet. And he was appointed to be head over everything for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. What amazing vision that you can have from Jesus because he is the head. He is the one who take position. He is the one who start doing things. And we in Hebrew, when we start to see the word Bereshit, the two first letters, Beit and Resh, is the word Bar, who means son. Son and the head is there. The son is the head. This should be a free translation for the first word of the Bible, in the principle, in the beginning, means the son is the head. You can give to any Hebrew scholar to see what's written here, bar and bereshit. He can say, wow, it's the son who is the head. The bar and the rosh, 
This is the Bereshit word. This is the very first word of the Bible. This is the way he wants to reveal for us that the Son is the head. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. That we have authority in the name of Jesus. That we can proclaim the glory in the name of Jesus. That everything belongs to Jesus. So we are connected. We have a fellowship because of the name of Jesus. And I want you to see also, I want you to see that the apostles have the vision of the headship and of the kingship. So we can see quickly three apostles that receive all this, that receive the vision that Jesus was no longer a baby, no longer a philosopher, no longer someone just to be worshipped as an idol. He is not an idol in the church. It's not an image to be worshipped. He is a very living being. You understand this living being. We have the power of this living being. And we know that he has everything and every situation he gave it to us. And every situation is about to understand how he is the one who received from God all this opportunity. So what Peter says. Peter, he was for three times, he was denying Jesus. But in the Pentecostal day, Peter just stood. He stood with all confidence. He stand with all the conditions to proclaim. What he did proclaim? He proclaimed that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. He says in Acts 2, 36, Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus with you whom you crucify both Lord and Messiah. He understand that position of Jesus. We must to pray today. We must to understand Jesus' position. His position on our behalf. His position to give to us everything we need. His position to make things clear to us and to give this authority that we can share this authority. We can share this healing power. We can share everything he gave to us. We can share all over the world. And he says in the same in book of Acts chapter 10, in Acts 2 is the Pentecostal time. In Acts 10 was in the first the Gentile, the first time that the, the word, the gospel, was preached to the Gentile was in Acts chapter 10. And also Peter was there to refer who was Jesus. And he says, you know the message that God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of people to Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. He was declared to the Gentiles that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. He was declared that Jesus Christ is the one who can forgive our sins. He has authority for that. You see, the church was persecuted at the beginning because this declaration that Jesus is the one who has the power to clean our sins, to forgive our sins, was very hated against the Jewish religion. Because the Jewish religion was about forgiving sins. It was about a big business for them. Involved all the lambs, all the pigeons, all the animals, all the fire, all the knives, all the altars. All the entire process to forgive sins was a very, very good business for the Jewish religion. But now Peter came to say, is the name of Jesus. That we don't have rituals to have our sins forgiven, we just have the name of Jesus because, because Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. That was the revelation of Peter. And also Paul. Paul gave him on his writings, writing things very important saying about who Jesus has with authority, who Jesus has before us. Jesus Christ is before all. So the test of Colossians is very important because at Colossians, he was just setting Jesus in such a way, in such opportunity, in such a level of revelation. Understand, we say, he says that the Son, Colossians 1.15, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. So God is, was invisible, but when we see Jesus, we can see God. We can see the Son as the image. 
We are created according to the image. The Son was created according to the image. And we now have the Son in us. So the perfect image of God can be in us. The invisible God. People say, where is God? God is in us. Through Jesus Christ. So we are carrying God. We are carrying the Spirit. We are carrying something very, very, very treasure, very important, very rich, because it's about Jesus. For in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, powers, rulers, authorities, all things have been created to him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. What a wonderful vision that you can have from Jesus Christ. He has received all these things. And he is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. At this time, we are going to pray. We understand that everything is held together. Everything is now before Jesus Christ. We are together as his body. His body today is holding together. His body today is the expression of his presence. His body today is what you have to manifest to all that Jesus Christ is the one who is living. This was the revelation of Paul. And I want to end saying about John. What John received as a revelation, because Peter, Paul, and John received the apostolic revelation about Jesus. So Jesus Christ is the ruler of all. So in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, we have many verses saying about the kingship of Jesus. Who is the one who become to be king over every situation? And these verses, they give to us a very clear revelation, a very clear vision that you have to understand the position of Jesus today. So can you start a revelation in chapter 11? What the way God is revealing Jesus Christ to our lives and what he has to say for us to understand. At, the, at that moment, he said, the seventh angel sounded his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven which say, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah and he will reign forever and ever. So this is a time, appointed time, that these things happen to us. This appointed time, that the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord. So we are praying on every mountain. You understand that the kingdom of the world has become now the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah. We are part from this new kingdom. We are part to rule, every, to govern with Jesus Christ. What I have to do here in, in the heaven, rule. So in the earth, learning how to govern, learning how to rule, learning how to do all these things because we are going to be and to see Jesus as the ruler of all. And I want, before I pray, to read more three verses with you. Revelation chapter 17 and the verse 14, they say something very interesting about the way Jesus is represented. He says, they will wage a war against the land, but the land will triumph over them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and with him will be his call, chosen and faithful followers. So he is now at this position. It was a war, but he was the one who prevailed, who triumphed over everything who came against. At this time, everything is coming against our life, but we know our position. We know how we can really release our lives and to understand that he is the one who chooses us, and we are his faithful followers. So we be with him, and that is the time, and that is the way we can really represent his position and his, and his kingdom. And Revelation 19.6 says, on this job and on this time, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
So it was really on his body. We are part of his body. So we know, we receive the mark. We manifest the mark. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And the last verse, I'm going to read and pray. These last three verses, we're going to read and pray together. Because the nations will work by its light. And, he, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. It's Revelation 21, 21, 24. So people say, oh, the, 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 any, the, the devil, the Satan is the... Is the priest of the world, but he says that the king of the earth will be Jesus. The nations will walk by its light. So the prince of this world has a darkness, and people cannot rule in the darkness, but the king now is Jesus, and the nations will walk by its light. And they bring the splendor into it, meaning that you're going to receive the glory and give him back the glory. And this will be the balance of the universe. No longer you're going to see receiving and retaining. You're going always to see receiving and giving it back. This is the balance of the universe. The universe must be balanced. When everyone receives the glory and give it back the glory. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to bless your life now. Look at the, the nice place and facility you have here. Is the church center. It's an opportunity for everyone. You have here all facilities. We give opportunity to see. We see big screens and all the facilities because the GBR office is also here. And we understand that this is the moment that the church be one. This is the moment that everyone be together and have this time together to worship together and to see amazing things happening. Let's pray in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you for the GBR family. Thank you for the new structures that we are presenting at this time. Thank you for Church Center. Thank you for everyone that you receive at this moment into this word, understanding that the scales in our eyes must be falling for us to us and to see who Jesus is, who you say you are, who you know you are, because our experience is to declare you are the King of Kings, you are the Lord of Lords, you are the one who is ruling our life now. We have been chosen by you, Lord, to be with you and to rule over the earth. We are the one who receive in our bodies your mark as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords. Thank you, because the war was established. But you are the one who triumphed over the enemy. And you step the enemy under your feet. At the cross, no one of your bonds were broken. Because you need all the bonds to just step Satan on its head. And this is what happened now. As GBR family, as the one all over the world, you are stepping Satan down. We know we are the body of Christ. We know we are the parts together. We know we are not broken. Our bones are not broken. The other robbers, the, the bones were broken. But Jesus Christ, none of his its bones were broken because it was the prophecy and it was the fulfillment. We are now ready to step over the Satan, over his head, because Jesus is the head and he is the one who has all the king and all, kingship and glory. We pray in Jesus' mighty name, Beshem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Thank you very amen, much. Amen, my brother. Yes, Bishop. Amen. Thank amen. you very much. All the way from Brazil. We are grateful for that powerful teaching. Uh, it's, it's amazing, Bishop, how the Lord have used you this morning to bless the soul of God's people. The Lord will refresh you, Bishop, in Jesus' mighty amen. name. Amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. So Thanks quickly, so much. Your ex yes, sir. Your Excellency, we are going to move quickly to our next program. We have waiting all the way in Nigeria, uh, Apostle Baba Dewumi. He will be leading us in a prayer session now. We will allow him the next 15 minutes to, to administrate in his office and be a blessing to us. He has been a wonderful steward of GBR. God have used him in diverse meetings. And I believe this morning, once again, Apostle God is going to be using you to bless God's people. Thank you for allowing God to use you. You have the floor now. God bless you.
Good morning, um, Your Excellencies. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Your Excellency, um, Bishop Oliveira from Brazil. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, Pastor Oyebanji. Thank you for what you are doing in the Lord. The Lord continue to strengthen you in Jesus' mighty name. This is Babza Dewumi, all the way from the high altitude city of Jos, Plateau State, high altitude temperate weather in the middle of Nigeria, the highest city in the middle of this country. And we are saying praise the Lord. And we are saying God bless you from the pinnacle city of Nigeria, Jos, Plateau State. We want to pray this morning and um, we want to pick up from where Bishop Oliveira um, led us to in the word of the Lord and in prayer. Jesus is king. Um, Christianity is not just the expression of a religion or of worship. It, it is the life and the expression of the heavenly kingdom through the heavenly father and his son, Jesus Christ. This morning, we are going to be praying and capturing that reality in our hearts. We are gonna bring that revelation into focus and begin to implement it in our hearts, in our lives, in our callings, our families, in the global business roundtable, GBR, and in the Global Fund for Jesus, JFFJ, we are going to express the dimension of the kingship of Jesus. Now, the Bible doesn't just say Jesus is king. The Bible says he is king for the sake of the church. He is head over all powers and rulers and kingdoms and governments for the sake of the church. I want to read, I want us to read together, if you will, a few scriptures from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter one. Let's read from verse 18 together. It says in ISV version, then with the eyes of your hearts enlightened, you will know the confidence that is produced by God having called you. The rich glory that his inheritance, that is his inheritance among the saints and the unlimited greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he brought about in the Messiah Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm. He is far above every ruler, authority. Again, verse 21, Jesus, he is far above every ruler, every authority, every power, every dominion, and even every name that be, can be named, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come, in the age to come. God has put everything under the Messiah's feet. And not just that, he has made him the head of everything for the good of the church. Wow, what, what a blessing, what a privilege. What an awesome reality. He made him the head of everything for the sake and for the good of the church. Verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills everything in every way. Jesus is king. He is ruler over every authority, government, dominion, and power not just in this age, but in the age to come, but he is not just ruler, but he is ruler for the sake of his church, the fullness of which 
the fullness of his body by which he, Jesus, intends to fill everything and everywhere where he is ruler over. Wow. The revelation of the kingship of Jesus Christ is not just for his sake alone, but it is for our sake as well, as his church, as his body, which he intends to fill everything with, his body, which he intends to fill everywhere where he is ruler. What, what a wonderful word. What an awesome message. Let's take a look also at the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 7. Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 7 says, Now to each one of us, grace has been given proportionate to the measure of the Messiah's gift. The grace we have is in proportion to the measure of the Messiah's gift. That is why God says, when he went up to the highest place, he led captives into captivity and gave gifts to people. Now, what does he, what does this he went up mean, except that he also had gone down into the lower parts of the earth? The one who went down is the same one who went up above all the heavens, so that all things will be filled or fulfilled. And it is he who gifted some to be apostles, others to be prophets, others to be evangelists, and still others, pastors and teachers, to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry and to build up the body of the Messiah until all of us are united in faith, in the full knowledge of God's Son, until we, ma we attain mature adulthood and full standard of the development of the Messiah. Hallelujah. I will read some of that again in the King James Version. He says in verse 10, he that descended is the same also that ascended far, ascended up far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. Verse 15 now says, but speaking the truth in love, we may all grow up as a body unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says, Jesus is head of all things, but he is made head of the body and he's made head of all things for the sake of the body. And he intends to use the body to fill up all the places where he is king to occupy, to colonize, to possess, to dominate all the places, which is everything, where he is king, which is all things. It is for the sake of the body that he might cause the body to inherit all of those things. This morning as we pray, let's pray together as individuals and say, Lord, I recognize you as king over my life. Let us pray together and begin to walk by prayer into the reality of the revelation of Jesus Christ as king over our lives, and then king over our works, and then king over GBR, GFFJ. We recognize him as king. Lord, I recognize you as king over my life this morning. I recognize that you are savior and yet you are ruler. You are the all eternal potentate. You are the supreme one. King Nebuchadnezzar saw that and said, you are the God of heaven who rules in the kingdoms and the affairs of men. You raise up the bases of men and set them as king and none can stay your hand and say, Lord, what doest thou? Lord, I recognize you as king. Now go on ahead and pray and say, Jesus, 
we recognize you as king over GBR, king over JFFJ, king over every sector of GBR and JFFJ. We recognize you as king of the nations. And in every nation where GBR is in function, is in operation, we ask you as king to position men in government for the sake of GBR advance, for the sake of kingdom advance, that you position women, position open doors, position open gates for the sake of your body, for the sake of your kingdom advance, for the sake of GBR, to have an open door in every nation, in every sphere, in the educational sphere, in the political sphere, in the business and financial sphere, in the banking and finance sphere, in the agricultural sphere. We ask you now as king to stretch forth your scepter and begin to exercise your dominion for the sake of the church, for the sake of GBR, for the sake of this global vision that you are executing in us. We believe you, Lord, we trust you. It is because you are king that you send for apostles and you send for prophets and you send for representatives to bear witness that the kingdom is coming and the Messiah is returning and appointing a day like Acts 17 says, for the judging of all the nations and for the resurrection of the dead. Lord, we are declaring your kingship over the nations right now. Out of GBR, we are proclaiming from Zion, Jesus is Lord and ruler over every nation of the earth. And right now, we, we ask that your scepter be stretched over our lives to establish your kingdom in our hearts. Be stretched over your, your, your vessel, GBR, your corporate vessel, GBR and JFFJ to establish establish the kingdom dominion in this round table, in this institution and organization and network. And now that your scepter of kingship be stretched into every nation where we operate, that your dominion now begins to take hold in Europe, in Eastern Europe, Western Europe, in the United States, in Central America, in South America, in China, in the Middle Eastern nations, in the Far Eastern nations, in the Middle East, let your scepter of kingship now be stretched over the regions, the territories, and the nations of the world, their kingdoms and their kings. And let your dominion now begin to express itself for the sake of the church, for the sake of, G, of GBR, for you are the prince of the kings of the earth. Let GBR gain favor with the kingdoms of the earth for the sake of the execution of your calling, your purpose, your decrees, your movement, your movings, and your giftings in these end times. Father, we ask for every apostle, every prophet, every evangelist, every teacher, every pastor, every representative, every director in GBR, GFFJ, in various parts of the world that you have raised. Father, we ask that your kingship dimension comes over their lives, your kingship dimension and your scepter of rulership be stretched over them in their various nations and be stretched over their various nations for the sake of these messengers, of these ambassadors, of these representatives, and that the doors of those nations be opened, the doors in Africa be opened, the doors in Nigeria be opened, the doors in Niger be opened, the doors in Sudan, Tunisia, Egypt, Morocco, in Zimbabwe, Zaire, Congo Republic, 
in Ta Tanzania, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Republic of South Africa, in Lesotho, in the nations of Africa. Let your scepter be stretched over those nations for the sake of your prophets, your apostles, your representatives of GBR. Thank you, Father. Go ahead, pray, people. It is for the sake of the church that Jesus Christ is king over all the earth, over all creation, over all rulers. What a privilege we have. This morning, we are tapping into the reality of that privilege. Thank you, Father. I see major open gates for Global Business Roundtable in Europe. Major open gates for Global Business Roundtable in Europe, Western Europe, Central Europe, Eastern Europe. There's going to be a breakthrough because the scepter of his kingship is stretched. The Bible says in Psalm 45, thy throne, O God, is forever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou hast loved righteousness. Thou hast loved justice, righteousness, and has hated wickedness. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Let that oil of gladness, Father, let that oil of gladness that flows from your scepter, that flows from your ordination, that flows from the kingship, now come upon every GBR representative. Let it come upon the convener. Let it come upon the crew and the team of directors. Let it come upon the sector leaders. Let it come upon the policy makers. Let it come upon the research panelists. Let it come upon the speakers and the preachers. Let it come upon the prophets, apostles, and pastors. Let it come upon the evangelists and teachers. Let there be a moving of the oil of the scepter of righteousness, of King Jesus. Let it be stretched over us. Let that oil flow over us. Let there be a throne of the kingship of Jesus in our lives that is set above all thrones. Therefore, I have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. GBR will go above the fellow governments, the fellow thrones, the fellow institutions for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of the kingship of Jesus Christ. You are a part of this conference. You are a part of this round table. You will experience this oil of gladness that lifts us above the fellows through Jesus Christ. This time is coming to a head. I would like to be us, like us to begin to like come into focus and come into rounding up as we focus on this oil that flows from the scepter of his kingship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor Olua uh, uh, told me, Oye uh, Banji, uh, um, would you please begin to come up? The word of the Lord is just flowing. Please, you are welcome. Amen. Thanks. Thank you, Apostle. We, re we receive the fresh oil, Lord, upon every life, upon the global business roundtable. Lipo siate crodisca brodisia, vilati copra hafitosia, dilatuski parukra artia, madis copre di farito siate, engradus copre di tula siate lobrahati, magrendus supatia, vicatuski paroti katush, atito egredisia, milatus copre ifitaka, vicatusi. Becrondi copredisia, macredu satia, ipora tu sicatalusia. Lord, let the oil from the altar of heaven begin to drop upon the head of everyone across the nations of the earth. Today, let the oil of gladness, the oil that caused the own of your people to be exalted. Oh, Zita Luprade, say, I found David. My servant, my holy oil, have anointed him. This own shall be exalted like the own of the unicorn. Lord, fresh oil, we activate yes, in the realm of the spirit. Itolikla dosita barush, akito beliate, lusitambro tisia, the oil of gladness. Say, how God anointed Jesus Christ the King with the Holy Ghost and with power. Let the Holy Ghost 
power fill up atmosphere today. Lusa tekita la paya. Irotenga radosa. Yes, Jesus. Holy Ghost, let your breath fall upon the earth. Let Jesus King reign forever in all nations, in all, all cities, in every family, in every place where your name is today. Thank you, our Father. We are grateful yes, Lord. for the pouring of your spirit, for the yes, release Father. of the mantle and the authority of the King. Upon your people today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, we are grateful this morning for the visitation of the Lord. Quickly, before we go on, We'll quickly call His Excellency Peter Templeton to come take us with the communion, the flesh and the body of Christ, so that if wherever you are across the nations of the earth, please get your material, get the flesh, get the blood. We are going to administer the communion this morning. Your Excellency Peter, it's now your time to take over. God bless you. Excellency, you can unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me? We have to. Can you yeah, we can hear you. Yes, good, first of all, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What good a morning, wonderful, yes, what a wonderful way to start today. I honor each person here today, and the word of God says this: If you eat not of my body and drink not of my blood, you have no part in me. Father, today we bring before you the elements of the body of Christ and the blood of the Lamb. And we honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you as King of kings and Lord of lords. As we eat of your body and drink of your blood. And as each person today across the globe in the GBR group closes their eyes and meditates on the sea of glass as they walk towards the holies and enter into the precious place in the heavenly realm, as they eat of your body and drink of your blood, Jesus. I ask for a quietness in each one as you allow your body to penetrate each person's cellular structure to the fullness and your blood in the fullness in each one as it prepares for the transformation and the outpouring of the fullness of the Spirit of God upon this group and upon the earth. Do this at your own pace. I thank you, Jesus. As we eat of the body, I say, Take your piece of bread and eat of the body of Christ. I thank you, Jesus. And as Father God, as the people are quiet, and then they eat up, drink of your blood. I thank you, Jesus, for the blood poured out on the cross and the blood poured out into each of us into the molecular structure of each human being and over each member on this group today, that it will not only touch them, but it will touch the family mountain of each individual. Father, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful morning as we break forth of this blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, the Ruach Kodesh. Thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach. We honor you. Thank you, members of the, of the council of this exclusive and amazing group. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Excellency Peter. We, we receive the flesh and the blood of Jesus with thanksgiving, and we know it will do a miracle in the life of God's people. Thank you, Excellency. Brethren, what a wonderful session we have today. Indeed, God is taking us from one level of glory to another level of glory, and we give him all the praise. Quickly, somebody have requested for us to pray for the nation of Gabon that every social unrest will be arrested. Before we go this morning, brethren, can you just quickly begin to intercede for the nation of Gabon? Ask God to, to put peace in that nation. We come against every trouble spot in Gabon. We pray for peace to reign. Let's ask God for peace over Gabon and every other part of the world where, where there is social unrest. Let the Lordship of Jesus, Jesus Christ has been proclaimed as the Prince of Peace. 
the Lord of Lords. Let us declare the peace of Jesus, the peace of Yeshua al Masih upon Gabon. Let's say, Gabon, you are blessed. We, we take authority over every social unrest. We declare peace. We declare peace. We release the scepter of authority over the nation of Gabon. We declare peace in Gabon. We use Gabon as a point of contact to every hot spot on the net on earth. We decree peace in all the nations of the earth. We rebook every storm of social unrest. We, we decree in the name of Jesus by the authority of this platform in Christ. We speak peace to Africa. We speak peace to the nation of Gabon. We come against every battle. We come against every social unrest. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the church. We pray for the people. We pray for the men in authority. We pray for wisdom to quiet the entire process in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way in Gabon. We plead the blood of Jesus to calm the situation. We plead the blood. We release the angel of God into that nation, into the heavenly space. We decree peace. We decree peace in Gabon in the name of Jesus. And we decree peace in all the nations of the earth. From the platform of the Global Business Roundtable Prayer Camp 2021, we release peace upon the earth. We declare that Jesus is Lord. We declare Jesus as Lord, his name, to bring peace, good tidings to mankind across the world. Thank you, Almighty Father. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Beloved, we, we have come to the end of today's ministration this morning. We want to thank the Lord Jesus for the privilege he has given to us to, 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 to fellowship in his presence. Don't forget that later this evening, we are going to be having the, the international session, which is also the, I will give room for the, for the, for the secretariat to bring the announcement briefly so that we can all be updated. Please invite your friends. Do everything possible. Ensure that when you get the link, you, you use it in all your social media platform. Invite people. There are many persons across the world that want to know what is happening in GBR. Please invite your friend. Keep informing them. Keep, uh, keep asking them to come on board. I tell you the truth. There are many persons today that are thanking God that they are seeing GBR online. Do well to advertise this. And we know that before this camp is over, God will take us to another level. Please, I want the Secretary to quickly do announcement as we go to worship before we close. Your Excellency, the bank. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, greetings, Your Excellencies. I greet you all in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think. Just to mention the key announcement, Your Excellency, um, is the one that the camp is going to run. Today is the second day, and the camp is going to run up until the 24th of February 2021. And our sessions are structured into three. In the mornings at 4 a.m. up to 5 a.m. <coughs> African time. You're all encouraged to wake up and to pray individually in your rooms, in your homes, or wherever you may be with your family and friends. And then at 5 a.m. up to 7 a.m. Central African time, we gather here on the Zoom platform to pray corporately. And as Your Excellency, as His Excellency Pastor Yabanji has mentioned, these sessions are free and available for everyone to attend. You are all encouraged to invite your friends, your family, your colleagues to join us in these powerful sessions. We then reconvene in the evening at 6.30 Central African time for our holistic development sessions or rather international sessions where we are gonna have panelists who are gonna speak about various topics where we're gonna come and learn about different topics in the sectors of society. Again, you're also encouraged to invite your friends and your family members and colleagues as well. And you're also encouraged to, for all those who want to join GBR, who've benefited immensely from these programs, 
to register on our website, which is www.globalbusinessroundtable.com. And the last reminder is that we are in fasting and prayer during the camp uh, period, which ends on the 24th of February, 2021. And those are the brief announcements. The detailed announcements are displayed on the screen, but also available on our website, www.globalbusinessroundtable.com. I thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Your Excellency, for that. We want to bring this meeting to a close this morning. I say, Father, we thank you for all you've done for us. We return all the glory back to you. As we go to fellowship this morning, let your presence, let your glory, let your power fill the atmosphere. Let everyone return with the same blessing that you have blessed us with today and let our life never remain the same again. Thank you, Jesus, for that which you have done in our life this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Brethren, we are going to the worship session. Please enjoy it. The Lord bless you. Have a great day. Amen. Thank you.